Okay, good afternoon. It's uh, very nice to be with you all, all this afternoon. My name's Kate Clough. I'm a Principal Superintendent Radiographer from Bradford Teaching Hospitals in the UK. So many of you may be unaware where Bradford is. We're quite pretty, really, basically on the outskirts. We're a historic mill city in the north of England. Now we're more famous for being the Kerry capital of the north of England than wool and cotton. We are quite an old trust and we have quite old buildings. We have two hospital sites at different sides of the city. St Luke's Hospital is smaller and mainly outpatient based, but this is Bradford Royal Infirmary. It's a teaching hospital and it's been in its current building since 1936, although there has been a hospital on this site since about 1825. We are quite limited for space as we're in a very built-up area and many of our buildings are listed, so it makes development very difficult. We've been quite lucky, though, in about sort of the past 10 years that we have had a lot of development with both um, renewal of the MR and the CT scanners. So in 2013, we were lucky enough to be chosen to be the world reference site for the Toshiba Prime. We are a busy teaching hospital. We serve a population of about 500,000 people. We have all the usual specialities. Very busy A&E department, which is the third busiest in the whole country. We have medicine, surgery, maternity unit, and across over at one side, we have the radiology department. We have 22 whole-time radiologists who all do some general reporting, but all have a subspeciality interest as well. So just to show you um, delivery day, it dawned very early, but not very bright, because we do live in the north of England and it often rains. Red carpet treatment as usual by Toshiba as we get our new scanner installed. And it has made a big difference to our department. It's much lighter and brighter and a much nicer place to work now. So what I really want to talk about is why workflow is important. We can understand why we need iterative reconstruction, but it has to fit into a clinical environment and it has to fit into a busy working radiology department. So I work for the NHS, a free service in the United Kingdom. When I first trained as a radiographer 20 years ago, the NHS was allowed to spend as much money as it wanted. When you ran out of money, the government gave you more money and you never got into debt. That's just not the case anymore. Within the last five to ten years, the NHS has become very, very target driven. The added difficulty for Bradford hospitals is we are a foundation trust, so we have to be financially in balance at all times. The government gives us targets that we have to meet as a trust, and if we don't meet these targets, we get financial penalties. So when we're trying to be financially in balance, we can't afford to incur any of these penalties. So within imaging, there's sort of four main targets that we need to think about. So we have accident and emergency patients. These are patients who just arrive, are ED patients, and they must be seen and treated and then discharged or admitted to a ward within four hours. And that applies to every single patient, whether they've cut their finger or being in a major traffic accident. We have fast track patients who are suspected cancer patients and these are referred to us and must be imaged and reported within seven days. Our urgent patients who must have the same treatment within two weeks and then all routine patients who have to be imaged and reported within six weeks. So it's, it's quite a tall order really for some examinations to stay within these time limits. So I manage the speciality imaging department. I cover CT, MR, intervention and fluoroscopy. And we are busy. We perform over 3,500 CT examinations a month. Our CT department is staffed 8 till 8, Monday to Friday and Saturday and Sunday mornings. But outside these hours, we provide an on-call service. And some of the radiographers that provide this service are not specialist CT radiographers. So it's very important that our scanners are easy to use for these members of staff. I think something that's very important and that is often missed is how the patient fits into this journey. It's incredibly important that the patient feels in control. 
and it's incredibly important that they can help themselves as much as possible and are comfortable during their scan. We've certainly found that the Toshiba Prime is really easy for us to get patients on and off. The table goes to just 330 millimetres, which means even the smallest patient can get on and off without any help. Not only making the patient feel in control, but also taking some workload off staff. It's not intimidating. It's got a really small gantry, but a wide bar. And this means we can accommodate almost anybody. It's great for interventions for your biopsy and drainage patients. We haven't yet found a patient who's too large to fit through the gantry. I'm sure that's a potential in the coming years, but not yet. And for ITU or ED patients who might be ventilated and have a number of infusions with them, it's, it's brilliant. It really makes our life easy. Get some great positioning devices. We've all tried to position patients a little frail old lady who can't put her arms above her head. So we get some great things from Toshiba to help us make patients really comfortable. And a great headrest. We, uh, we scan our fair share of intoxicated patients, shall I say, during the night who don't really want a head scan. Um, and it's very useful to make sure that they're not going to move during your scan. So we find this is really good compared to our other scanner. It is important that the patient's comfortable, but we have found that the time the patient on the table is reduced greatly by this scanner. So the scan time is much lower and the length of breath holds are reduced. So typically we're looking to do a CT chest with a breath hold of about three minutes and a CT abdomen about uh, three minutes, three seconds. Sorry, your patient will be dead after three minutes. Three seconds and your abdomen for four seconds, which is about half what we were used to. Safety, a massive thing in the NHS and I'm sure every hospital that you all work in. So the scanner itself has got something called iStation, which is the monitor on the gantry. We currently still get paper-based requests, but within the next six months, they will disappear from our hospital. And the patient details on the iScreen mean that it's easy for us to identify our patients and ensure that we're scanning the correct patient for the correct examination. The foot pedal guard. I certainly, when I worked in CT, have put a patient on the table, scanned a patient, and when I've got them off, they've stood on the foot pedal, and then you get the table moving and the patient nearly on the floor. The guard here means it's not possible for your patient to do that, so it's much safer for everybody. And the in-room scan controls. So as I said, we have an on-call service after 8 o'clock at night. And during this time, there is only one radiographer working. So it's important that they can use the system safely. The in-room scan controls mean that you can start your scan from inside the, inside the scan room. So if your patient needs extra support, or you suspect they may move, you want to stand with them for some reason, you can do that quite safely and easily with the Toshiba Prime. And reduced radiation and contrast dose. So... It's something that we were all taught as radiographers that we need to keep the dose as low as reasonably achievable. And with our previous scanner, that is what we did. But we found that with the built-in ADA 3D, the, our doses are much reduced, between 50 and 80% for most patients. And we've also been able to reduce our contrast dose. So historically, we would give every patient needing contrast 100 mils of 300 strength contrast. Most of our CT abdomen patients now get 75 mils or less. And for something like a CTPA, we would probably only use 40 to 50 mils. So going back to what we said before, it's easy for the patient to get on and off the table. It's the lowest scan table that we've got in the department at just 330 millimetres. We do have a bariatric couch, so we can take patients up to 300 kilograms in weight. We haven't had anybody we can't put on this scanner yet, and we did previously have to turn patients away, which is not only embarrassing for the staff, but dreadful for the patient when they've got no option for a scan. It's got a long scan range. Again, with our previous scanner, it was common to need to move patients up and down the table to make sure they were in the scannable range, and this was difficult for the staff and uncomfortable for the patient. This is my glamorous assistant, Haley, who I... Uh, press ganged into being photographed. So Haley's probably taller than me, and she doesn't 
It fits on the table well, it fits within the scan range, and we could have scanned any part of Haley there without having to move her. The scannable range is also really clearly marked, so if your area of interest is in within the white section of the mattress, you will be able to scan that patient. Within the black section, you will need to reposition, but the black section is very small. Lateral table movement was something that we need, needed to wait for because when our scanner was delivered, it hadn't been released. And this allows us to move our table sideways four centimetres each way. It doesn't sound very much, but it makes a big difference. Something that I think is really important to point out is positioning is crucial with the Toshiba scanner. I think we've gone through a period of time where you could just put a patient on the scanner and scan and it would be okay. If you want to optimise your images and your dose reduction, it's really important to position accurately with the Toshiba Prime, and this allows us to do that easily. Infection control is a massive thing in the UK. So the gantry is easy to clean, the cabinets are small and on wheels, and it means we can get our cleaners to clean really well within the room. And communication. So there's CCTV, there's two microphones within the gantry so we can hear the patient and they can hear us. There's integrated breathing lights, which are important for us in Bradford because we have a big population of patients who don't speak English. And there's cartoons for children. This is my favourite little bit. If you paediatric patients that you're scanning, you can change the eye station so that they get cartoons to watch while you're scanning them, which greatly increases compliance. So it's a Windows-based platform, which means all our staff are really comfortable using this scanner. And it's very intuitive, which is really important to the non-specialist CT radiographers that use this. It has something called InstaView. So in real time, as you're scanning, um, I'll say non-diagnostic images appear that make sure you can check the area of interest that you've scanned. And when I say non-diagnostic, this just means that all the post-process in the background is not applied. They are quite easy to use, and it just means we can keep our work flowing within the department. Sure Start is the bolus tracking software and historically we would shy away from bolus tracking because on our old system it was very complicated to use. But with Sure Start we found that it's really easy and all our staff now use it for most patients that get a contrast injection. And the ADA 3D. So this is built into all our protocols. It's not something that we need to make a decision about using. It's not an, an option for the radiographer at the start of a scan. It's always built into the protocols. So a little bit about ADA 3D. I'm not going to talk about how it works. That's been very well described to us, and I don't pretend to understand it. Basically, for me, we can reduce the dose and put a noisy image in at one end and get a beautiful image out of the other end. The cabinets that we need, it's, it's great, it's small, it fits easily into our scan room. We don't need a separate room to enable us to do this, and we don't need any additional post-processing from the radiographers. This runs in the background on all the scans and then gets sent to packs, so it doesn't take any time for our staff to do this. So you'll see the image on the right is just filtered back projection, as we've heard, and the image on the left is with ADA 3D, and you can see, I think, that the filtered back projection image we would suggest is non-diagnostic, but once we've put the ADA 3D on, beautiful image. There's three strengths of ADA 3D, so there's mild, standard, and strong. We tend to use standard, but we can change to mild or strong if we feel that a patient's going to need that. And then the sure exposure. So what this does is look at the scanogram and it modulates the MA to reduce the dose. So you can see the green line. You want the green line on the right, the sort of wiggly line that doesn't meet the, meet the top. And that's what you want to see. So the images on the left, the dose there was 19.6 milligray. The image on the right, 5 milligray, which is a, de which is a reduction of 74%. So I'm just going to show you a few examples of what we can achieve with this. So our old CT on the left, a dose of 14.3 millisieverts. It's a nice image, but it's quite a high dose. On the right, just 2.9 millisieverts, so a reduction of 80%. Shoulder arthrogram, so we've reduced our doses by up to 50% there, from about 4 millisieverts down to 2. 
and CTPA in pregnancy. So this is something that we do increasingly within our trust. Um, and of course, we want to keep the dose low for every patient, but particularly for somebody who's pregnant. And you can see with our doses are down by about 75% there. And our contrast doses are down to 40 or 50 mils. Paediatrics is something we would have shied away from. We would never have CT'd a paediatric patient if we could have avoided it. They would always have gone for ultrasound. This particular patient came in through A&E. So you can see, I mean, the pictures are lovely. The circles just highlight nice things on the pictures. But on the right, you can see a liver laceration that couldn't be identified under ultrasound. All for just 1.1 millisieverts. So CT in paediatrics is certainly something that we're starting to use more. So just really in conclusion, this is a scanner that fits fantastically into our workflow. Although it does some brilliant imaging and it can do perfusion scanning and metal artifact reduction, that's not what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. We need a scanner that can scan any patient, any time, with any radiographer. And this is certainly what we've found. And the fully integrated ADA has allowed us to reduce our doses, but not impact negatively on the workflow within the department or the time that the radiographers have. Thank you.